Welcome, 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 everyone, to the Music Is Therapy Show. How you doing, Johnny? How you doing, Janice? I'm stressed out. Oh. I'm so glad that we finally got here. Oh, I'm sorry that you got stressed out. I, I wasn't. I, I was. I was getting ready, and uh, I appreciate everyone for coming to the Music Is Therapy Show, where we talk about music and its connection to a variety of therapies, including psychedelics. All right. You have to do that woo sound again, Brian. Yeah, man. Woo. Hey, question really quick. Okay? Yeah. Question real quick. Yes. Do you hear this? Do you yeah, hear this? Loud. It's loud. <laughs> you hear that? But you know, if you put it close to your mouth, like how Johnny has his, well, then you'll sound better because then you don't have the reverberation. Yeah, you. because Red Shul said to keep it apart. It's, it's kind of, well, not that close. Her mic, her, her <laughs> mic is going through the room. It's not going direct. That mic. Yeah, that's. This, this, this is coming directly from what's coming out of my PA. Yeah, yes. see, that's the problem. That's why we hear it reverberating in the room. But we'll talk about that <laughs> off the well, show. Well, that's what I want. <laughs> I know, I know, because that's you what you want. Yourself through your oh, PA, that's we'll, cool. We'll talk about how that works for you versus how it works. Chorus delay yeah. reverb. Yeah. Over your friends. <laughs> Yeah, it can be. And sometimes, uh, like Bonnie knows, by doing like lots of podcasts, actually to have more that clean radio sounding kind of more like if I'm like this too, right? That clean radio sounding mic'd voice compression. Yeah. I don't even have a compressor hooked up to mine. There's some built-in tech on this little this globe here. But the point is when you're doing a podcast or a show like this, uh, generally what you want is real clear, no reverb sound. just clear right johnny that's true yeah you listen to johnny's voice yeah L yeah listen, listen to, to my janice's voice. voice and also the the key to that too <laughs> is um i've been doing these shows weekly now for nine years mm -hmm. and if you go back to my earlier shows you know over the years my voice doesn't sound like this it's developed no. into yeah. what it is developed into what it sounds like janice <laughs> <laughs> and even how you i'm not going to tell you why my voice developed the way it did yeah. Well, we'll talk about this off air, Janice. Maybe after the show. Let's, let's, let's discuss this after the show because we got one hour. I want to okay. kind of get into this a little bit. I try not to stretch the. It'll be TMI. Um, by the way, we might as well do a quick uh, presentation of uh, of this, even though I haven't updated it in any recent time at all. Let's say thank you to those who support the Music Therapy Laz channel. We've got PayPal supporters, Mike Olson. Gunnerman54, Charles75N, who just had Michael B. on, who, you know, Michael, he's been on our show before. He's a wonderful guy, an amazing person. And then we've got uh, Keith Holmes, of course, uh, William Da Silva, who makes some amazing glass picks. If you're a guitar player and you want to check out something really unique and different in the way that it feels, plays, and sounds. You can make these chirpy sounds with those glass picks that are really cool. Check cool. out William De Silva. And there are people on here, too, that have uh, donated that I haven't added on here, so I need to update this. I know it's pretty sad. Uh, special supporters, Johnny Bean, because he does too many things to help. Janice, so many things. l &M Guitar Corner, many, many, many things. Octopus Ears, Albatross, and more, including the, uh, the pedal I was using at my last um, practice or jam, whatever you want to call it, Johnny, at my friend Joe's with my sister. I was using the heavy metal pedal. Or actually, is it the heavy metal? No, it's the metal zone pedal. Ooh, I think yeah. that even predated the heavy metal pedal. First, it was a metal zone, wasn't it? Then the heavy metal pedal. And I think the heavy metal might have been first. Yeah, I'm curious. The about metal, metal zone. I remember the metal zone <laughs> because at the time, I uh, I wanted to get a 5150. Mm -hmm. And this goes back They're to... Expensive. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I mean, now they're really, really expensive. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think the heavy metal was first uh, because um, the the metal zone I would use, uh, this goes back to 1994. Ben Coons house. Uh -huh. I think 1994. I think 1994 is when uh, when I started using the uh, the metal zone. Mm hmm. And then I got a 5150 and then I would use that for, for sessions and then rehearsals. And then, but a lot of times I would, anyway, long story short is, is, uh, I would use the metal zone and I loved it. I thought it was great. 
it did get kind of a bad rap eventually. A lot of people have kind of made fun of it and didn't didn't like it or whatever. Well, but, you know, people started making fun of heavy metal altogether at a certain point, weren't they? I mean, wow, yeah. The whole hair yeah. metal scene kind of got a little bit crazy. By the end of it, uh, it was pretty, in some ways, kind of funny and silly. But then, then the thrash metal stuff made it serious again. It made it more raw. Anyway, but um, we digress. So the heavy metal pedal you're familiar with, uh, the Metal Zone, did you yes. use one of those in place of the 5150 head is what you're talking about, right? That's what I just Before said. You got yeah. One. yeah, so. That's what I just said. Yeah, oh, to I encapsulate didn't... what Johnny's saying. I never owned and, uh, one, right, Ned? Yeah. What do you think? Ned. What? Ned says. And that's no, a, I didn't. Best. I did. I, I, <laughs> a friend of mine had one. Look at it. Talk it. Hey, spotlight me real quick. You're talking right, about, right, you're talking about, talking about using. Well, you, we'll look talk at him. about animal therapy. What were you, what, what, what are you using? I don't know, what are you little, on? He looks a little, <laughs> either, either you just gave him some, <laughs> some catnip. What are you on right now? Man? <laughs> Isn't that what catnip does for cats? They like to get high mm. on catnip. You know. This guy smells good. Actually, he peed uh, in the bathroom last night, so he was on time. Is that why, oh, is that why he smells good? Or you guys but, washed? Uh, <laughs> but he, he's he's good now, you guys. Oh, look, there we're go, look we're going off the rails already, Johnny. Let's get back on there track. He is. I <laughs> know. Right, back to back to the the. I know. Uh, he looks pleased. Yes, indeed. <laughs> he's pleased. Pleased. We'll talk about music and animal therapy too, because we have to combine music with these things to make it sense, make sense of the show. Right. <laughs> oh my God! If you're if you're new to this show, which I doubt you are, because most everyone I see in the chat um, knows me and Johnny uh, for you know, and Janice too. Do you have any of these yet, Janice? No. We got to send you some equipment, man. We got to equip you with some proper equipments. I got, I got, I got three of these, and I got oh the original, the first one and only. Hello. Don't right. do don't do that loud don't do one. That. Don't do that anymore. Okay. Look at this. Oh, I've even got a I, I, I have a. Yeah. Oh my God! Got just got hundreds and hundreds of things here. All right. So those are the. But I got this things. now. I have this. Oh. Yeah, you have that. There you go. Wait a minute right. here. Oh, there, there's that. Uh... Oh my God. Oh my God. All right. <laughs> Hi, <Bill. laughs> By the way, last night was fun, man. Last night, Laz took us on a on a on a trip to Safeway, which is a grocery store out here. All right, let's let's stop. Okay, we're we're done with the sound and sound effects. All right, all right, all right, all right. Don't, I, I was awake for that you. part. <laughs> all right, stop. All right, let's 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 simmer down now. I know I chipped it off at some point. <laughs> All right, so uh, like like Michael B here, let's go ahead and go right into the subject because it's a serious subject and it's a very good subject and and something that thank goodness or thank science or God or whatever you believe in. Thankfully, we are starting to go back towards investigating, studying, and using and and you know uh, getting a grip on our mental and physical and spiritual health through the use of ancient and even modern ways of using psychedelics to treat all kinds of ailments. How about that? What I would sometimes call diseases because the word disease is actually a term, you know, that they use in medically as a disease, like you have cancer, it's a disease. Well, disease is basically what the word is. So if you have something that's causing you a disease, that's why they start saying that alcoholism is a disease because it's a disease. You're not an alcoholic because you want to be, for the most part. Yeah, you're masking, you know, traumas or other things by using some drug or some something that can alter your your mind and mood and spirit, right? Uh, even even physically, sometimes people use uh, things like alcohol and other drugs to. Uh, you know, alleviate pain. And sometimes that pain is mental. Sometimes, you know, it's it's that psychological side. Sometimes it could be both that and physical, you know. But psychedelics is a very unique form of, uh, you know, medicine, as they would say in the uh, regions of Peru, where I got this shirt. Let me solo you guys on this, because this shirt is kind of specific a little bit to what we're talking about. So it's about the Pachamama and the Pacha Tata. <laughs> uh, talking about, you know, if you don't know what that is, that's the, the father and the mother uh, earth 
you know, they were not like gods. They were just thought of as, you know, those are the spirits that, that lead us, that try to teach us. And ayahuasca is a form of a psychedelic that has uh, the DMT molecule in it, which affects our serotonin receptors um, in a way that we will have experiences that you can either find them to be hallucinogenic. Uh, sometimes they're auditory. And that's where the music side comes in, the music side of, of the experience of psychedelics. Uh, music is often very helpful in directing a person's experience when they're using a psychedelic for some treatment or whatever, or if you want to call it uh, as a medicine, right? But, yeah, often, but who, who needs psychedelics when, when you can listen to Johnny B on the ASMR show? Hey. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's exactly the point is that some people can Text actually, in the mail, Janice. Yeah, there you go. As a matter of fact, Janice, really good point. As a matter of fact, there's science and we're doing more and more studies. Uh, right, there you go. <laughs> there, send, that, send that Bitcoin to Janice. Somebody Johnny, already won this. The Johnny I'm, mailing, I'm already mailing this out tomorrow. Somebody already won Very this. Cool. That's a guitar pick. It, it looks <laughs> like a guitar pick. It looks like a Bitcoin thing. Yeah. But um. But can yeah, I say music? something real quick though? Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't mean to take over your show. Since yeah. Janice mentioned guitar ASMR tonight, I'll be demoing mm -hmm. the Dod Bone Shaker pedal. The bone Shaker. Is that new? Uh, no. How long has that been uh, around? Uh, years. Years. <laughs> it's been around a long time. <laughs> Anyway, you guys, I'm giving this away next Saturday night. So Very tune nice. in next wow. Saturday night for your chance to win this. Johnny gives away gifts, and he sends them. I do. I gave away three things yesterday, man. Yeah. Anyway, tune in tonight for the demo of this. Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific on Johnny Bean. There we go. And then win it next uh, Saturday night. See, here you go. James D or Jamie D. Sorry, Jamie. Jamie. Welcome to the show, Jamie. Um, if you're new to this uh, show, uh, please hit the subscribe and notification buttons and all that and sh share it out because I'm trying to grow this. As a matter of fact, I'll be giving away a guitar to someone in the chat during that live okay, show. Janice? Have some water. There you go. Yeah. Here, let's hit. Oh. Okay, she already hit her mute button for herself. Thank you. Um, I will be giving away a guitar as a music therapy kind of a gift <laughs> from the show when I hit a thousand subs. So we're getting there. We're working our way up. up. I hate water. You hate water? Have some tea. Hot tea, lemon, honey. That's what I had last night. And it helped Wadger. me out. Wadger. Yeah. Water. Wadger. Vodka. Vodka. Vodka, Vodka looks just like that. water. <laughs> oh, my God. Dan Gorman says peyote. Yeah, that's that's another form. So let's get into this, right? So ayahuasca, peyote, mescaline is a little bit different. Um, I tried that. Mushrooms, mushrooms, peyote, and ayahuasca are of that psilocybin family, if I'm correct. I could be wrong, but if I'm correct, I'm going by memory here. I'm not reading this. <laughs> I do read a lot of stuff to get uh, these shows off the ground and a lot of research and, and it's great because this is stuff that i was actually studying about 10 years ago a little more than 10 years ago that i'm getting back to with the show part of the reason why i even started this whole channel was to try to get involved in even though i'm not a doctor or, or myself a therapist or licensed in any way so wait a minute beware. therapist is in your name yeah i just call them, no I music call therapy. therapist laz no it's music therapy I just You're not doctor therapy, therapy Laz. I I hope to someday Junior? actually be that. Maybe I will actually complete that goal in my lifetime at some point, Johnny. Yeah, I, I do have time. that. I do have that. I do. Doctor, I do. I do. therapist, the 50s, P I'm in my pianist. Exactly. Therapist, pianist. Yeah, yeah, I'm a pianist. You're a pianist. I, I do. Right. <laughs> yeah, I that, that should be in your name. Synthesis. Anyway, no, that's okay. Synthesis. But uh, the point is, is that Synthesis. psilocybins uh, are Sibilance. part of this. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Janice, talk to that mic again. <laughs> oh, my God. Sibilance. <laughs> All right, this is it. And then I'm taking over, you guys. <laughs> don't, make me, don't make me kick you out of the show. <laughs> I'm rage quitting. I know you are going to rage quit. I can feel it. All right, I'm leaving. <laughs> Goodbye. Right. You guys are yeah. awesome. I'll see you tonight. You rocked it. <laughs> I knew he was going to do that. All right. Thank you, Johnny Bean. <laughs> 
what I love about Johnny and why I was so attracted to watching his shows, thank you, Johnny, is because of that. It's fun. It's funny and and not as educational, of course, <laughs> but, <laughs> but definitely on the fun side of things. And boy, do we need that in this world, don't we? Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that, Rock Daddy, right? Uh, the shrooms, uh, big in the early 70s, well, in the 60s especially. Um, we'll, we can get into some of this uh, right right now. How about that? Well, let's get right into it. So, like what I have on this shirt, this shirt is the three spirit animals, the three spirit animals of the the Andes, or of the, uh, as we would call it, the, the Inca nation, or the the um the people that lived there before the incas took over that uh, used these uh things like ayahuasca in the jungle as a form of medicine um did that to become more connected to their universe to the pachamama and the pachatata the the father and the mother of earth the the connection to each other and to um their world to their environment and and just like the ancient greeks that we spoke about uh, previously about color we were talking about colors and sound and music and how music uh, was considered um a very important part of of i guess the philosophical way of thinking about the universe the harmonization of things how things harmonize we talked about the last couple of weeks about color like in the rainbow you see through the prism of of you know the the particular molecules of water in the air after a rain shower and that becomes kind of like a prism that as light shines through it creates the form of the rainbow okay right and you have all those colors in the rainbow that are various frequencies of sound that you see as frequencies of light particle right and or reflections of so refraction and being, and refraction being in of tune light, right and being in tune yeah and being in tune is a big part of what the greeks believe just like the the incas and other indigenous peoples all around the world all around the world used different forms of hallucinogenic substances to alter their perception of reality and then sometimes elicit different perceptions ways of thinking kind of like your dreams so there's a few links in the description here you guys that go into the depth of the science and that always happens every time we're on the show <laughs> it's, it's my blue my thing i know i know you should turn it off before we start the show i know <laughs> we're, we're I guess. <laughs> but we're always doing so many things right janice it's hard to remember everything yeah right. that's there it. You go. yeah i have one of those those are great not that exact one but similar yeah, Bluetooth. And, and I and I mic it into my PA. Very cool. Yeah, you have quite an elaborate setup. We gotta check that out one time. We'll have to do yeah. on the gear and demo show. We'll have to do a show. That sounds Show great. us your setup, kind of thing, right? That's there's no. It used to be Thursday. See, I said Thursday. It, that's Wednesday nights at eight p.m. Gear and demo show, you guys. Maybe we'll show off everyone's setup. That would be fun to do, right? So back to the psilocybin and all that. So that's one class of psychedelics. And then you have others that are kind of similar, but they have a different reaction in the way it affects our serotonin receptors in the brain. But what, what happens there is it allows for our mind to be released from what, as we become adults, our mind is formed. Our brain is actually formed into being more rigid. I don't know if you know this, but... Our synaptic connections are, I don't know how many, 10,000 times more connections than as we get older, those connections get kind of fluffed off or cut off. And, and we become more rigid in our thinking so that we can function in the world around us. Because if we're running around like children in La La Land, pretending and having, you know, uh, all kinds of uh, imaginary friends and imaginary things. Doing I've been in stuff. La La Land all my life. La La La. See, you get La La Land. There you go. So that's the whole thing is that that if you're trying to function in the real world to be able to, you know, go out and get the food, create shelter so you can survive and make babies and procreate right. so the species will survive. That's kind that. of the main, you know, things that we we do as adults, right? When we're children, though, we're imagining, we're, we're creating, we're experiencing, and then we take all that information, all that, you know, 
and our brain starts to starts to codify this stuff it starts to you know rigidly um, define it and use it in ways to shape the world around us and and as we all know throughout the history of mankind or whatever you want to call our species man woman you know humankind we have been slowly evolving and collectively gaining a lot of like information and a lot of data to create what we call laws or or facts or theories you know theories first and then we prove them and maybe they become what we call kind of known facts or laws right um these things uh help us you know create in the real world reality the dream stuff so i often say to a lot of people especially my sweetie you got to dream it first first i have to dream of the possibility of making like this happen and then it it happens now what's gonna what is this gonna become i don't know i'm 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 letting it evolve i'm trying to direct it but i'm still trying to keep that childlike exploring and experimenting and creative kind of thing going so i don't keep it walled in and allow it to break out you know break out into its own manifestation of some sorts but at the same time we try to direct these things right now psilocybins and and other lsd and other things like that have been very helpful for not just exploring and enjoying this side of exploring the world you know there are people in the dot-com world that did mushrooms this is a known fact to help them you know or other drugs like that to help them gain a better perspective on what might be possible dream up new ideas so that they can then put it into code when they're now back down to earth if you want to call it that and now codify that or create something you know physical out of the dream right and look at the world we're living now we're you know 30 years ago if you would ask somebody hey you're gonna have a well okay 40 years ago you're gonna have a phone like device like this just like on star trek where you can talk to anyone anywhere on the planet probably anyone in space eventually the um, jetsons too yeah the jetsons uh, push button you know everyone's going to be flying around in cars and and self-driving self-flying vehicles um we've got hovercraft already you know in on the market being produced here in the bay area there's hovercraft that they're going to be having flying around soon um you know all these things are are slowly becoming reality from what we dreamt up right right wrong hey, deliveries so exactly we're gonna have like drone deliveries and all this kind of stuff um so it's very fascinating you know how first you got to dream it you know and they call a lot of people that are dreamers nuts or whatever like back in the day leonardo da vinci was already drafting up ideas on how to create like a, a helicopter you know or a flying wing plane kind of device or you know he, he was just kept going with those ideas and i wonder i wonder if back then in europe they partook in some form of you know mind-altering substance to help them expand their perceptions on things but let's get back to the healing aspect because that's kind of in the title and how you know these things can be very healing in in our lives and i'm going to take a chance again because every time i do this i get in trouble but i i do want to take a chance again on showing a quick little blurb a quick little video on uh on how you know these things have been helping us and let's see i'm trying to find which one is this short short version yeah okay it's this one let me go ahead and uh oops no wrong 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 thingy uh what's going on here let's go big Oh, that's a very long one. I want to do this one. <laughs> All right. So can psychedelics cure is what this is about. Something going on in the chat, isn't there, Janice? <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's go ahead and bring this in. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. Uh, remove from studio. Let's uh, go ahead and present screen. And this is uh, from a newscast, so I'm hoping because this is a newscast, it's not gonna, it's not gonna cause some kind of copyright issue. That I've had another. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Come on, go back here. 
There we go. All right, I think I got it. All right, let's add this to the stage. All right, so this is from uh, Morning News, uh, PBS public broadcasting station, Morning News. And, and this is uh, a, a few minutes long, four minutes long about can psychedelics cure? All right, let's go ahead and hit it. Treatments allow us to reinvent ourselves. From addiction. I haven't drank since my very first session. To depression. <laughs> I haven't felt sadness. It's not for everybody. It's not a magic bullet, but it does change things meaningfully for many patients. They're allowing the brain to see itself. In the new documentary, Can Psychedelics Cure? Scientists examine the positive effects of hallucinogenic drugs. It looks at whether it can help people struggling with a range of conditions, including addiction, depression, and PTSD. Joining us now to tell us more is the film's director, Larkin McPhee. Good, Good morning. Thank you for being with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So everyone, when you think of uh, psychedelics, you think of the 60s, and that really was a turning point for any research on any good these drugs might have been doing. Talk about that. You're so right. Nixon brought all this really interesting, critical research to a standstill with the Controlled Substance Act. Um, but fortunately, some really wonderful pioneering scientists uh, rekindled interest and in this real resurgence right now in psychedelic medicine because really profound things were happening back in the 50s. They were giving patients drugs like LSD to help with alcohol use disorder. And today, as our film documents, we cover patients taking psilocybin, magic mushrooms, for alcohol use, and it's having a very positive effect. So it's quite um, hopeful. I would imagine in the 60s, people using psychedelics were using them to escape trauma or to, you know, to change whatever was going on in their life, escape depression. Um, and, and doctors probably would have said that's dangerous. Is that what they said? Or is it, is well, it this about dosage and the therapy in combination? Yes. I think back then, it's hard to say it was very recreational, and I think people were hoping to have a lot of fun, but it was also dangerous, bad trips occurred. Whereas today, in these very safe containers with medical supervision um, and patients being screened for mental illness like schizophrenia, which would not work well on these drugs, they're um, having very positive results now because they're helping patients who do have pretty severe depression or have PTSD trauma, like we feature a combat veteran in the show. So let me pause this just for a second because I wanted to, to make a point. And I also learned that if I, if I do stop sometimes these videos from playing, I'm less likely to get a copyright strike and if I just like stop them and then play them some more. So one thing I wanted to comment about this, and this is, you know, from recent studies that have been going on. And part of what one of that, one of the newscasters was talking about there, that people were doing this recreationally, just to have fun and party kind of thing. That's, that's actually not very accurate, though. It kind of became that to some degree. I think that's a perception that that's created by um, government and other, you know, people that wanted to make this seem like, oh, there's nothing serious about this usage and and i i have to say i disagree with that because i think a lot of the people that were doing this uh weren't just doing it in the way that a lot of modern movie and tv and other you know uh expressions of what was going on back in the 60s like like it was people just escaping or trying to deal with trauma no i think people really did not like what they saw going on in the world war people having a lot of stuff, but not sharing it with others and not caring about others. And they found when they wanted to be empathetic with others and try to, you know, help them out and let's all help each other. The whole kumbaya is almost made fun of and hippies are made fun of, you know, why is that? What, what's, what's that attitude? Where does it come from? You know, and one of the problems that we've seen uh, that we're starting to, to, to kind of, deal with now trying to deal with now is the suffering in the world due to a lot of these attitudes about trying to control everything and and putting everything into a box and labeling everything and and look at the amount of stress there is in today's world and people in their jobs and you know everyone 
is is pushed to produce and you know have a have a goal that you have to do and and there's there's less you know understanding empathy love caring you know american society too so different than a lot of other societies where the the entire generational family stays together and supports each other with a community around them the the village kind of thing if you want to go into that you know you can't uh in my mind honestly raise a child into a productive human being without having that caring connection of community and family and love and empathy and a lot of times we drop the ball there. All this stuff about, you know, shootings and schools and stuff like, well, how do you think that happens? I think that the breakdown of community and these social connections and cultural connections and caring for each other is why those things occur. Because we, we, if those people aren't performing the way we expect them to, we just toss them out. Oh, they're just falling through the cracks, as you've heard it said so many times, right? And, and you know, if we truly cared about each other as all of us having some reason to be here and together, we should be helping each other and have some empathy and caring and to find the person who's got autism or Asperger's or whatever other psychological um, difference from what we would call normal. And, and bring them into the fold, show them how we can help them be productive. You know, we found people out there who have some of these uh, other ways of, of behaving and thinking to be rather beneficial for society and culture because they can teach us how to see things in a different perspective. And that's what all this is about. Like some of these, these it's not just about healing a mental disorder. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's just understanding our place together as a species on this planet in this world and how are we gonna you know how are we gonna save the planet from ourselves is one big question you know because we're doing a lot of destruction to it so if we're not able to to connect with each other and try to find solutions to these problems we're, we're just going to destroy it all right and so one of the things that i think in the 60s that was going on this big counterculture kind of thing was a a counter to at that time to Nixon and other, you know, governmental entities, uh, everything from the CIA to the military industrial complex. We we were seeing, you know, the endless wars, fighting and killing and death going on. And the young people had enough, you know, and students revolted. The same students who revolted and started to take sides with what we called colored people back then, because somehow they're different because they're colored, you know. Um, and, and pushed for change, right? And a lot of those uh, controlling, you know, people and organizations and whatever um, didn't like that and saw how drugs and these things, uh, psychedelics and other, other mood and mind-altering, you know, substances uh, affected people's behavior and how they decided to, you know, fight against or counter the um, authoritarian kind of controlling aspects of our society, culture, government, whatever, right? And so what this guy was saying there, I think, is so based on that, that newscaster, so based on how these things were formed into our collective consciousness to understand these medicines or medications or, or whatever, however they were used in the past as spiritual you know, ways of, of dealing with trauma or, or whatever, you know, um, even just life, understanding the universe, you know, um, it's framed, his perspective is framed in the way he frames it on, on that newscast too, is framed from that kind of perspective, you know, that was kind of forced on us over the last four or five decades or more of, you know, that being made illegal. Not just the use of it as a, a a substance for recreational purposes or whatever, or spiritual purposes or whatever, um, but it wasn't even allowed to be studied anymore, even though it was showing a lot of benefits. It it was not allowed to be studied anymore by science. I mean, it was it was basically outlawed. It was shut off, cut off completely. Government funding cut off. You know, it's like saying, oh. 
the space studying space is bad. We're going to outlaw studying anything off the planet because we should be thinking only of the planet only and let's shut off the rest. We don't need to know anything else. Sound familiar? <laughs> How about the uh, they uh, outlawed uh, they outlawed uh, Link Ray's uh, uh, Rumble song because they thought that the the chord was satanic. Yeah, right. Right. Well, okay, I read that just, the other day. Let me address this by BC Rich here. So, aren't all of these benevolent, peace-loving baby boomers now the people in charge that are driving the world into the abyss? Well, I would say no. I would say a lot of these uh, people are the ones who are, you know, are turning their back on those things that they learned back then. They forget, you know, just like we forget, you know, what it's like when we were children and had imaginatory, you know, creative, uh, thought provoking, you know, ways of ways of seeing the world. Uh, how often have you heard, you know, people say, ask a child if you want to know the truth about something, because a lot of times they see it, boom, they'll give you the answer, you know, and, the, and sometimes adults are shocked by how does this child know, you know, <laughs> and, and a lot of times we drive that out of them by, by, by you know, these systems that we've put into place. And I'm not and saying maybe they're the reincarnated from somebody who they knew. Be. Who knows? But but a lot of these things, uh, you know, as children are growing up, they're exploring the world and they're starting to, you know, piece the pieces together. But how often they're told not to think this way or that way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not one of the boomers in charge. And 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 thank goodness there are some of the younger people or even the boomers that realize, hey, man, we're getting it all wrong. Look where we're going, you know. And a lot of times it's money you know, and greed and power that have driven us away from these things, right? Um, because if it's not going to, you know, fulfill the needs of the bottom line and the, and the stockholders of the whatever, the corporatization of, of you know, everything, um, then, then if there's no profit in it, we don't do it. You know, some people say there could probably already be a cure for cancer out there, but it's not as profitable as all the drugs we're giving people to just, you know, keep, keep the symptoms right. at bay. And that's exactly where I'm and, getting at with and, uh, the drugs. On, on their, uh, their uh, payroll. Yeah. Why did they shut these things down? In, 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 okay, let's say we shut it down for recreational use, but why did they shut it down back then, these authoritarian you know, institutions, governments, and people? Why did they shut down the medical uses of these things? Why? Maybe, maybe they wanted people to be more controllable in the direction of their way of thinking control and and you know look what's happened it's look all about happened. money yeah it's become too much about money and control and and how is the world being affected by this right but let's get back on the subject of the music side and and this but i wanted to play that let me let me continue this because this is uh gets good um, and then addiction, um, smoking, we weren't able to cover, but th there's, they're treating a range of conditions. And I think that's what's most astonishing about psychedelics is it's not just one thing. And as we know, mental health is a huge issue in our country. So we, if this is another tool in our belt, it's a, it's a critical one. We really need it. Most people think when you're treating addiction, treating it with more drugs seems like a cocktail for disaster. You always hear that addicts don't even want to take a, an opioid if they get injured. So how, how do they reconcile that? That's a really good question. And one of the biggest differences is that these drugs are not addictive. And most mm. people don't know that because we're so scared back then. I mean, I remember growing up being afraid of these drugs, thinking we're going to jump out a window or look at the sun and go blind, as one of our characters says. But these drugs are, and it is ironic that we're treating recreational use of, say, alcohol with another recreational drug. But these drugs now are in the FDA pipeline, um, at least MDMA ecstasy is for approval, as is psilocybin. So there's there's not addictive qualities. We have to be careful around toxicity with MDMA, but but these are actually presenting themselves as possible therapies, and they're showing benefit to date. 
Well, it's called Can Psychedelics Cure? It's streaming now. You can visit pbs.org slash Nova for more information. You can also visit larkinmcphee.com. Thanks for being with Thank us. Thank you. Thank you both very much. How very recent cool, was that? Right? How yeah. recent was that article? Um, I think that's only been a couple few years. The uh, the 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 PBS like it's a movie. It's like a, it's like a documentary okay. kind of thing. But let me go into kind of like what they were talking a little bit about here. So there have been. I'm reading this. This is out of a, a study, and all these studies and these things that I'm reading off to you guys is actually, you know, things that are on the uh, the uh, scientific side of things. So doctors and scientists studying these things and, and learning about how these things can be used. So what she talks about, you know, the use of these things are like not, you know, your egg is your brain on drugs and this is what's going to have you're going to be fried. Not true. <laughs> you know, there can be people that have very strong reactions to things. But here's the thing, what they're as we've been able to study some of these drugs and, and these psychedelics and, and figure out ways of using them safely, um, let me read this. Several studies have shown that by blocking psychedelic 5-H22A, this is part of the serotonin receptor uh, agonism in healthy individuals, by administering, this is science talk, so try to get over that, by administering a 5-HT2A receptor antagonist, the hallucinogenic effects of both psilocybin and LSD can be blocked. So they are able to get the use of these psychedelics without having the hallucinogenic effect on the patient and thereby it's not like oh let's get you know see crazy things and get high and get scared and get freaked out they're able to actually use the other parts of the serotonin receptors um you know effect on the serotonin you know on the brain um to help with their their otherwise traumatic and other experiences like ptsd like alcoholism, a lot of a lot of these things. Like like they talked about, um, people with schizophrenia are probably not good to be on these things because of the hallucinogenic effects. But if you're able to use these these chemicals that are in our brain um, in a positive way that don't cause problems, but then cause you know healing, then it's a good thing. But um, you know, how can this be be you know what what? what are some of the ways we can get this to affect the human mind and a person? Well, this is where music comes in. This is a really interesting part about the music side of things. And this is something that you'll find in how music is used in spiritual practices, shamanism and other things that have been tabooed because of, you know, I would call them the, 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 the religious wars or the religious, you know, fanatical ideologies that have, caused a lot of war and, and havoc and killing and whatnot in the world and the ignorance of how these things are used in a way that are very positive just like native american indians use peyote or other substances like tobacco uh, they'll use those things in conjunction with each other like i i know from personal experience during a ayahuasca uh you know ceremony that we participated in when we went to the jungle on my birthday um, that weekend, uh, we were in the jungle and got connected. My, my intention, when they ask you, you have to write down your intention. Why, why are you doing this? You know, my intention was to become more connected to the universe and my sweetie. <laughs> and it, when it worked, cause I had a wonderful experience. My sweetie's intention was to connect herself more, well, not connect, but she wanted to face her fears and, oh boy, did they come at her, you know, and all her fears came at her and her ayahuasca experience. A lot of really good work done, really? Here, though it took a lot of time for a lot of that for her to absorb it and and understand it and 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 uh, and it did a lot of healing for her. Yeah, um, welcome to the jungle, exactly. <laughs> PC Rich, you're funny. Yeah, there it is. Anyway, but um, yeah, and that's the thing. See, some people will do these things for for fun. In recreational purposes but originally these things were used by and used you know as medicine and that's actually what they call ayahuasca in in the uh amazon and the people that do these things um the shamans who generally you want to go to a real shaman kind of ex experience you don't want to just go where because a lot of this is like becoming a tourist thing now too just like drugs were in the 60s became too recreational 
And the bottom line is that uh, when when performed and used, used properly, properly, oops. oops. Oh, oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, what, happened, what happened, Dan? I just, just came on. on. Shut it off. <laughs> Not good. No, it's, no, it's, it's causing, causing a, a. I'm getting, I'm getting a, a delay. delay. Yeah. Okay, I was yeah, just going to try to keep the. Uh, yeah, you yeah, can you turn, turn the volume, volume all the way off. Or, I was just trying to keep but... the uh, uh, the laptop speakers on. You know. Okay. Turn off the uh, the headphones because I want to make some coffee. Oh, I see. Um, why? If you want to mix coffee, just step out. I'll, I'll keep talking. You can go. I'll just take you out. I'll remove you. Is that all right? Like this? Is that all right? I'll take you out. Okay. Go ahead and make some coffee. We got 10 minutes left, though. I so can't hear you. Time. I don't know what happened. Can you hear yourself now? Can you hear we'll me now? Anyway. All right. She'll be back. I'm going to remove Janice. <laughs> so Janice is going to make some coffee. But um, yeah, so where was I I'm trying to think? Oh, yeah, the ayahuasca experience. So so the point is, is that uh, it can be used recreationally or it can be used for a purpose of, you know, spiritual and otherwise even, you know, personal enlightenment. Um, like I was mentioning before, some people have been using uh, psilocybin, mushrooms, and LSD, even and other things, to to microdosing, as they call it, sometimes because they don't take a heavy dose to you know hallucinate and go go woo. You know, it's more to get an expansion of mind. As a matter of fact, the word psychedelic means mind expanding. Psyche being mind or spirit, and delo psycho psychedelo delo being manifesting or revealing, and so. It's, it's meant, even the word psychedelic is meant to be about, you know, expanding our perception of the world, of our environment around us, right? Let me bring you back. You got that coffee. That was quick. Mm. So, um, it's just, so we were it's talking just, about... Uh, cold, you know, tap water with instant coffee. Mm -hmm. It's just oh, a black really? coffee that went cold. There you go. So, so... Some of the studies here, they talk about how these drugs activate a subtype of the serotonin 2A receptor in the brain and causing an unusual psychological properties uh, like, you know, alter altering perception of reality where you think, see things melting together and whatever, you know, um, it can alter your consciousness. And one of the things that is the most helpful part of it, and I think part of why, you know, certain people decided to go so hard against it is that it's it's a delusion there's a delusion of ego that takes place so it takes the ego out it makes us more empathetic towards each other you know um when you remove the ego that can sometimes really help in finding consensus because egos keep us no it can only be this, be this way kind of thing right um and what's interesting about the experiences on these these psychedelics is that it it allows for an exploration, I'm reading this now, uh, an exploration and an imagining and the creativity that manifests. There's less, less structured, less focused, less functional, you know, ways of the mind working going on. Um, that's why it interferes with getting things done. Now, that's why a lot of these, you know, governmental and other institutions and people were so against it. Because they saw, oh, you guys are all just, you know, kumbaya and who's working, who's building things, who's making things, who's getting things done. And there could be something to be said for that. There was a big fear about how, oh, my God, how are we going to be able to beat the Russians if we're, you know, the big red scare back then, you know, anti-communism and all that. How are we going to be able to beat them if nobody wants to go fight for our rights and fight for freedom and fight for our, our world or aren't willing to build buildings and create you know things so there's an i have an understanding for that and there's some you know true truth to that right um but at the same time a lot of the things that we've created and built in our modern era especially in the technological side of things has been because of this expansion of mind and and creativity and thinking that came about in some ways through these things even even einstein said that he dreamed the equation of E equals mc squared and and then 
authoritarian people and people wanting to control and have power over stuff decided, oh, let's make this into a bomb <laughs> and then let's use this as a weapon to force people to change because we can't get them to do so otherwise. And so there could be a lot of, you know, argument and discussion on that side of things. But but the bottom line is that uh, a lot of this has to do with opening up you know, the mind, the brain's plasticity in the adult mind, back to like what we were talking about in the beginning, Janice, the mind of a child, the ability to be, hey, let's play with, with each other. We let's, let's have fun. Let's, let's play doctor. Let's play this. Let's play that. It's innocent. Unlike the, the adult mind, which often isn't as innocent because there are now these rules that define that play one way or another as being good or bad you know so yeah i thought i'd throw this one out there as i think we're gonna have to come back to this for more detail because we've got five minutes left okay. and we got a little off track right at the beginning <laughs> i i always expect when our good friend johnny bean is in the show <laughs> johnny is very much like that child like we were even talking about this one time and and I remember one time asking, "Why don't you have kids?" And I'm like, "I am a kid." <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, I get it." <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> In some ways, I think you know. Uh, you I'm know, a kid too. You're a kid too. You know. And, I never had any and, kids. And when you have kids, uh, boy, does it make you more adult. I, I can't imagine it. Yeah, it really will. It, it make astounds more of an adult. me. Yeah. It, I tell I you, I see when people you start, celebrating their kids' twenty-third birthday. I says, "My daughter can you imagine turned twenty-one." Tw Twenty-three much. years with with yeah. a, a person. Yeah, and you have to you have to mold them. Yeah, so let me throw this this uh, out into the chat, you all, and I really appreciate all the input that you guys have been uh, putting into the chat. Um, yeah, exactly, Eddie Faye, right? Well, that could have been due to radical people with big egos in the late 1930s as well. Exactly. And thank goodness uh, the Nazis felt that they didn't need to have any of that Jew science in their in their world. And, and thankfully, because of that, they didn't develop the bomb before we did. Because, boy, if they did, would this world be different? <laughs> right? Wow. Uh, no worries. Ron, thanks for joining. Ron Gunner, our good friend friend of the show gotta have you on the uh, gear and demo show again soon dude we gotta do something in there the weather's improving it's getting warmer here um i'm having second thoughts about using the enamel as a paint on that kramer i'm thinking that you know maybe lacquer would be smarter because really with the environment that i have to work in with these things a faster drying substance like lacquer would probably be better not that it's great for the uh air though uh, but anyway, there is that, you know, maybe I should think more, you know, environmentalistic, especially with April coming around. We've got Earth Day coming soon. Right. And um, I've always been a big proponent of Earth Day and protecting the environment. And maybe we need to get away from uh, these bad chemicals. You know, I appreciate l &M Guitar Corner for doing the oil finish on that one guitar that uh, they were working on. Right. Um, rather than uh, these uh, fluorocarbons that we're spraying into the air, right? Boom, Boomster Black's way ahead of the game. He's got 43, 38, and 37 kids all together. No, I'm kidding. Ages. <laughs> uh, sorry, I had to go there. Wow. Uh, Ryan Hall also here. So let's say hi to everybody before we leave. We've got Rock Daddy. Everyone's saying hi to each other. We have Martin, Martin, Martian, Martin, <laughs> Martian Murray. Uh, kids make you old. I think I think they make you young because when I hang out with my daughter or with young people, it brings the kid out of me. That, that's but I get what you're saying because the responsibility is such a weight. <laughs> Charles also here saying hola to friends and whatnot, and uh, of course Eddie Faye with his very wise words throughout the chat here. Rody's Jack Cave also here. The big red scare was equal the border crisis, right? So much about the border that we don't understand. We we there was this book that my wife had to read uh, for one of her classes, um, and it was called um, um, oh, geez, now what is it? Something without borders. Anyway, um, basically, it talks about how borders create some so much of the problems that we have because people are migratory and and part of being free in the world is being able to be migratory doesn't mean that you're going to live here but maybe you come here to work and go back and and this uh wanting to control you know 
the the these things is is one of the problems i think and and you know maybe we have to do it so that uh we can't be taken over and invaded by or taken over by people so there's all these concerns a lot of the fear that drives us drives us you know towards a path of destruction and many times yoda said it best right fear <laughs> you know fear will drive you you know towards anger and anger will drive you towards hate and hate you know is the dark side right of our of our humanity right bc rich also here what's up dude lots of interesting things in here right yeah and uh do definitely please help me out by commenting after the show Blackjack guitar, congratulating Boomster Black with something. Weed is good, right? I've never seen anyone high on marijuana go destroying, killing, hurting people. Um, yeah. Yeah, MK12, right? Yeah, we're getting into the depths of the CIA. We're using LSD before the public class. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, they learned from some of the people that, you know, we can get into this a little bit before the end here. All right, so let me see. I have some notes. <laughs> One of the things they found in the CIA, of course, too, is how you know adults on this substance are going to be less efficient and less functioning in society, and and it can be used as a way of maybe perhaps even uh, messing with the enemy, using it as a uh, you know way of uh, of affecting the enemy, you know, as a perhaps as a weapon or something like that, right? Um, but I did copy and paste into here somewhere some info about this. Well, I'll tell you, the uh, the performance uh, that I get uh, on my two substances that I use is completely different. Mm -hmm. it's, okay, uh, well, like tell us your experience. Flower, uh, uh, it dulls me, it, it it makes me hesitant. I can't, I can't sing on, on flower, but I can on vape. It, mm -hmm. it gives me the... Uh, the, the on point thing that I really need, but uh, we just takes it right away. Yeah. And that's the interesting thing know about, what it is with the you know, system. yeah, the same thing. Right. Every human being, their own body is a little bit different, right? Um, I'll tell you that my sweetie's experience, like with marijuana, was way more hallucinogenic and the paranoia and all that kind of like, you know, if you've ever seen those um, movies or documentary kind of informational things the government was putting out, reefer madness and stuff like that, people going crazy and laughing and paranoid and not knowing how to control themselves on marijuana. There are some people that have that kind of effect. My sweetie's one of them, you know, um, whereas for me, it's more like a mellowing thing. I just kind of chill out, mellow out, get more creative, you know. That kind of thing. Mm, so I've seen um, that. Nor everybody's should I? different because it depends on how your brain and how it reacts with your receptors based on your DNA, and not just your DNA, but how your body has been receiving some of these chemicals, and and how it then creates receptors for them, or if it doesn't have receptors for them, or if it's got things that block certain aspects of it. Like for me, I must have some blockers in my receptors. When it comes to how marijuana affects me versus others you know some others may have more open receptors and therefore they get way more effective for example she is pretty much dna wise when we did our, our dna stuff um she found out that she's pretty much a hundred percent uh indigenous american which goes way back you know i think there might be a little bit of of asian because of her her mom looks like she has some asian because in the Southern Pacific there, you know, there's definitely some of that. Um, and possibly some Northeast African, possibly. But, you know, that goes back to, you know, way back. So, so really interesting stuff about how in our DNA and how our body is structured, right, to receive these chemicals. In, and as more and more peoples from different parts of the world co-mingle and, you know, mix, the more these things are going to be sometimes either diluted or, or mixed so that we have different, you know, psychological and physical um, reactions to these chemicals, right? But they're all chemicals that are in our body. Like um, DMT is actually already in our bodies. Um, it's, it's already there. Um, but normally it's not released, you know, uh, only during certain 
moments in time. It's it's really interesting, like at moments of death and things like that, where you have a DMT released and you have that, you know, kind of dreamlike stuff going on. Oh, hi, Ryan Hall's also here. I wanted to say hi to everybody. I think I said hi to MPN and Charles and these guys up in the beginning, but I just wanted to say hi to everyone else who's here. I think I've got mostly everybody, right? Anybody new in the chat? Give us your, so tell me more about your experience and we'll go a little long since we're already up after the hour here, but we'll go a little long. Um, tell me more about your experience with some of these chemicals, how you in your lifetime used them and, and how they work for you in what ways. You mean like like uh, LSD and stuff like that? Anything. Tell us. Tell us. You know. Tell us a little bit about that. I I, I had mind. LSD quite a few times in uh, in California when I lived there, and and I kind of like uh, uh, stopped doing it. It was like 1979, April 17th, where I had a drive on it. Oh, I've heard that's like. There's another. Um, if I hadn't put it into the. Uh, description there's that i think it's that nova one and my sweetie and i were watching one too last night let me make sure i put that into the uh into the description that goes into you know the use of psychedelics and people talking about don't drive don't, don't drive, look in no. the mirror don't there's certain things that they say don't do but you know um it depends greatly like my experience with ayahuasca it depended greatly on the the environment they say well, what is that the environment's very important. Is, is that uh, a method of it's something, more, or is it's that a, a drug? It's it's actually the combination of uh, a leaf and a bark of two different plants that is then boiled together, and the one that boils together with the other one allows for you to have the experience um, that otherwise in your gut there are these blockers to these things that. You wouldn't have the experience if you just ate the leaf, for example, or just had the bark without the leaf combination thing. Um, so they create this like this this mixture, this drink, and you drink it, and then you actually puke it out, and then you then have the experience. Um, and it's and it's transformative for many many people. So it's hard to get into the the depths of it, you know. At this point, we're past an hour, but maybe we should do part two of this. Is that is that like or a piece part pipe? Two, three. No, what you was, don't smoke it. You was, drink it. What was in the peace pipe? There was no peace pipe. You just drink it. But, I mean, there Ayahuasca. was a peace pipe. Other, no. other, like That's Native American. This is this is yes. Amazonian. So the ayahuasca is actually wondering. a drink. Then there's mescaline, like uh, Boomster Black is talking about. Um, you know, there are peyote is a, a smoked form as well of a I type of California plant. Too, okay. Yeah, it's like a cactus-like kind of a plant. Um, it's considered, you know, spiritual, you know, medicine. Um, then there's mushrooms and psilocybins of that sort that you ingest, like the the ayahuasca is ingested. Um, yeah, and then, then there's that too. Remember that the mood you're already... This is where we were talking about, Sean. Thank you, Sean Hockey. Talking about your intention. That's why setting up the the particular experience in the proper frame of mind having the proper intention and this is where music comes into play a lot music is has shown to be a big part of helping direct the experience so let me read this part um uh, this is in one of the studies that you can check out in the description music has widely been agreed upon to be a crucial part of the psychedelic setting with well-chosen music being thought to encourage long-term positive mental health outcomes, music has been related to therapeutically useful emotions, mental imagine imagery, that is, and a sense of safety, among other benefits. In the absence of psychedelics, music therapy, or the use of personalized music listening or music production interventions led by a trained music therapist, has been widely shown to have positive clinical outcomes so this is when they say clinical they mean measured right they're able to measure positive outcomes against like you know a controlled study um where there's no you know actual benefit or something right so reviews of music therapy effectiveness in children adolescents and adults has shown strong positive outcomes strong you know there are drugs that don't even have 
strong outcomes. Sometimes, oh, it only affect you know is ineffective for certain people, and other people have no effect. So some of these outcomes include uh, positive effects on social functioning and speech production among children and adolescents that have neurodevelopmental disorders. Uh, lowering of anxiety. This is where it helps with PTSD and and you know all kinds of other you know stress related kind of things. Um, where was that? Anxiety, pain, shortness of breath among patients with chronic or active illnesses or advanced illnesses like cancer and things like that, right? Improves quality of life among cancer patients. There we go. Reduction in depressive symptoms among older adults. Improvement in gait among patients with Parkinson's. So that's ability to walk and move. On what? Global on Parkinson's disease. But what's, what are you talking about with the Parkinson's? So music. Music can help. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Music. So we're talking about the, the positive effects of music. Uh, global and social functioning among individuals with schizophrenia and improvements in verbal fluency and reductions in anxiety, depression, apathy among patients and with dementia and others. So that's one of the problems with dementia is that you don't know who you are and where you are and you become apathetic because nothing matters kind of thing. And music can really help you emotionally connect with not just yourself, but with others. And that's the whole thing about music connected with the use of psychedelics for treatment, you know, um, is that it helps in that process, right? Whereas some people can have a scary psychological and schizophrenic kind of almost crazy experience on some kind of uh, psychedelic, music in the right setting can be used to help you, you know, not control but direct the experience in a more positive and beneficial manner right and that's how it's always been used yeah booster black <laughs> i wonder if musicians have a stronger sense of psych psychological effects of music well that's the thing is that a lot of uh, musicians discovered um early on especially with uh in the fields okay let's go let's get let's get to use of of mind-altering substances outside of alcohol, which we've known for a long time, um, music and, 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 you know, these kinds of things, drugs, whether it's alcohol or tobacco or, or marijuana or whatever, um, people have been, you know, using both those things together, music and these kind of mind-altering, mood-altering substances, substances to, to um, let go, to disconnect from the concrete everyday thinking what are we doing what do we got to do like sometimes you just got to the stress of all that hey mark's gas station what's up the stress of all that can be alleviated by music in combination with those things i mean what's a bar like just go to a bar and just drinking without there being some music in the background i don't know I've, I, I can't even imagine it being any fun whatsoever and look how your music is Hey, hey, Eddie, um, out of the black is that the Neil Diamond song that is making a reference? Could very well be. You know, we're talking about I mean, Neil uh, Neil black. Young, Neil Young, into the blue, into the out of the black, or something like that. My my hey hey. Could be. You know. You know that song. I mean, my, my my hey. Yeah, hey. I know. Yeah, I know that that Neil Young was definitely an anti-establishment type of actor back in the late sixties and early seventies, and all you know probably throughout his entire life, right? Because um, he saw the dangers of established authoritarian, you know, entities and how they're used, right? Uh, oh, he's saying it's fun and good music, but Royal Blood's um, song has a darker tone. Yeah, and Lucy in the sky. I don't know if you know Lucy. The word Lucy is actually a term to describe LSD. Lucy. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. LSD. Lu yeah. Yep. Yeah. They, they call With it With diamonds. Yeah. Lucy, sky, and diamonds. Diamonds, crystals, you know. Yeah, LSD. It's, it's a, a Lucy in the sky so with diamonds. If you guys don't know, LSD was invented by Albert Hoffman, uh, doctor and scientist. And what it stands for is lysergic acid Di diethylamide. It's hard to say that. 
<laughs> diethylamide. That's why they shortened it to LSD. Anyway, but the other similar um, psychedelics are psilocybin, ayahuasca, MDNA, DMT, and, and a variety of these psychedelics are used for different reasons. Like MDNA is completely different than DMT and how MDNA makes you more um, uh, less apathetic. You know, it makes you more of uh, trusting and wanting to connect with another person and, and everything around you, right? So, uh, Boomster, Boomster Black has seen diamonds. <laughs> so, uh, well, we could talk a little more about the music side. So, let me talk about this part about, and then we'll end it on here. And then let's do part two. Maybe this will be a preamble of sorts, or maybe like a setup for part two next week. Um, psychedelic music in oh, the Oh, wait 60s. a minute. Next mm -hmm. week is Easter. Are we are we going to be on? Yeah. Why not? I have my I have my uh, my sisters at five o'clock, so I think I'll be okay. Okay. Yeah, we have a five o'clock dinner kind of thing too. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, we'll do we'll do. Or we're going to continue. We can talk about the more spiritual aspects of using these things, right? Throughout throughout even the church and and other spiritual uh, entities, right? Um, but let's go on this real quick about music that. 1960s were, were a time of rapid and dramatic change. I'm reading out of this. Uh, you can click on this link too under psychedelic music in the 1960s. Dramatic change in American culture and a counterculture emerged with a major epicenter in San Francisco, California, my hometown. Inspired by the writers of the beats like Jack Kerouac and Allen Ginsberg, the youth of the 60s began looking for inspiration beyond those of materialism and money making that were seen as emphasized by the 50s society, right? There was a big buildup, you know, of everything after the Second World War, putting people to work that were, you know, working on war at the time and created what they called the Great Society, right? For many, a cultural rift had formed between young people and their parents' generation. Some of the youth that identified as part of this new subculture became known as hippies, Characterized by casual clothing and long hair, as well as simple and communal lifestyles, hippies created an alternative way of living that was reflected in the music of the counterculture. Another important aspect of this new subculture was the use of psychedelic drugs, such as LSD, which inspired the music of many bands. Lucy in the Sky of Diamonds, right? The whole Yellow Submarine <laughs> trip thing, you know? And it, if you ever seen that movie, that Beatles movie, it's, it's very much a psychedelic uh, experience, right? Which uh, in a temp, uh, the Yellow Submarine. Oh, yeah. The Beatles, yeah. An attempt to achieve an exploratory quality comparative to the drug experience, some bands would perform lengthy improvisations, like the Grateful Dead, right, that drifted into many different musical territories. Also, the Beatles' early psychedelic musical experiences, as well as developments in experimental classical music, pointed the direction music was taking, providing inspiration for rock and pop groups that came from alternative sources. Now, those alternative sources were experiencing with the yogis in India. I forget exactly which Rahamaja guy that they, <laughs> I'm probably saying that wrong, that they connected with to get a better connection and, and experience and understanding of their place in the universe. Remember, John Lennon had this big break with, with you know, who am I? You know, uh, you've got, you know, uh, the other members, uh, you know, being whoever they they call themselves. And John Lennon, I remember, you know, was the ego was was in him. You know, who am I though? You know, and we all said, well, you're the Walrus, dude. We all knew. But anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, cuckoo too. Also, the Beatles' early psychedelic musical experiences, as well as developments in the experience of well, okay, I read that already. Many groups were inspired by Indian classical, jazz, experimental, modern music unencumbered by commercialism so unencumbered by commercialism and that's the rift right what's what we can make money on what's not you know what's what what's the purpose of it all just to make the money san francisco became the mecca of the hippie movement as the city had a very relaxed and non-authoritarian atmosphere and had become the home of choice for many beat writers so Beat writers being these writers who wrote about life and it was a new on the road philosophy. Yeah, being on the road, you know, Check the beaten life. path, right? So uh yeah, yeah. So anyway, we we're almost 20 minutes past the hour. I think we should move on 
from this uh, into next week. But uh, I hope I was able it. to cover some really cool stuff that you guys enjoyed here. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much, Ron Gunner. Yeah, that's right. Dama Rishi yeah. Mahesh. And how about Rory said it too. And Cuckoo Kachu Kachu Chu. Chu Chu. Chug 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 Lug, right? <laughs> yeah, and hippie is still a bad word to some. Yeah, and there's plenty of people that Jim that used to call me a hippie all the time as a, as a negative, like a negative. Oh, you're a hippie, like and I hated it. You know, don't call me a hippie. I, well, I, I, but what's wrong I, I with mean, being uh, a hippie? Are, are you ashamed well, of uh, well, because I, I you know, hippiness? The, the, well, you know, Why? I always feel Why? myself as a as a New Yorker, a, a, a cosmopolitan type. New there Yorker. you go. You're more. There you go. So. In reality, but, but, they try to diminish you, you know, and that's the thing about the, the rift between these two different directions is the authoritarian controlling one wants to diminish you because their ego, their I, I, I'm, they know I'm, right. I'm more goth right. than a hippie. Right on. Rhodey's Jam Cave is a hippie. One of my favorite guys in YouTube. Goth. Metalhead hippie. <laughs> he just says it. I love it. Anyway, so what I say is don't be so afraid of the hippie side of you. Yeah, I know, Quentin James. I don't think he really hates hippies. I just think he is more of a hippie than anyone else that I know. On on, he may as well move. <laughs> he, he just doesn't want to admit it. <laughs> Q, Quentin James, F. Vikan James. Yeah, I know. I know. I love. I love Q. I love Quentin. He's great. I actually have one of his T-shirts. I'll wear it next week. I have his one and only T-shirt. <laughs> that he ever put out there but um thank you michael b also for joining the chat um let me know if you want to come on next week's show if you want to talk about any of this stuff with us because you might have some you know understanding about this stuff um definitely you know let me know but um next week we'll continue with part two we'll talk a little bit more in depth about uh these spiritual and um experimental and dreamlike experiences of um using psilocybin, LSD, other psychotropic uh, drugs, and the good and bad of them. Let's let's talk about the bad of them too, right? Yeah. <laughs> I laughed that the guy called me a dirty hippie, not the slur it once was, right? And boomer, boomers and boomster, <laughs> boomster black is a redneck liberal hippie. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Uh, I love I love it when people break uh, the traditional definitions of these things and combine them, right? <laughs> because that, that is, is outstanding. Yeah, I'll bring mushrooms to my mom. There you go. Happy Sunday, everybody. We'll talk about the church and the use of, uh, you know, these things in the church, you know? I mean, where did they first create beer and why? Let's, we can talk about that. <laughs> that that's an interesting In the question. wine. Well, in wine, too. Why do they use wine as a sacrament? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, we can go right in. We're going into ZR to stop genocide, and I had eight inoculations in five minutes by air injections. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're talking about here, but we'll post it. We all passed out for an hour. Oh, okay. Yeah, when you were in the military? We can talk about that. Yeah. I think. I, I think. Yeah, I think that's what you're talking about, right? Oh, we'll talk about that. That That's, you know, they did experiments using chemicals like lsd um the military you know volunteers right <laughs> um so yeah we'll talk about that and uh you want to do a thing about celtic folklore uh we talked a little bit about celtic, celtic. Patrick and celtic uh, stuff last year but um yeah celtic I mean, celtic well not celtic sorry celtic no. yeah the celtics is the uh the basketball team. Oh, but don't they have a shamrock as their Thing, so aren't they supposed to be the Celtics then? Well, not maybe Celtic. they should be Celtics too. Maybe they have it mispronounced all this time, right? Yeah, yeah. We could talk about uh, you know the Nazis and all these guys. As a matter of fact, uh, you know the the SS they were often hopped up on all kinds of drugs to make them more powerful and strong, and you know a lot of the meth and and stuff like that. Speed, um, yeah, the things that that can make you more controllable rather than you know, less controlled, right? So uh, let's go on to next week. We'll talk about this then. Uh, thank you guys all for coming. You all really, really rock. I'll do this one more time. I should put uh, uh, present the supporters of the show here, and I've got to add 
I've got to add like, you know, other people to this, obviously. I mean, big time supporter, for example, we've got Hobo Rody here. Super awesome supporter of the show. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, kamikazes too, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, um, that's the thing is that some of these things were used as a tool by our, our institutions, or, you know, people of power, right? And we should be more aware of these things, right? That, that's why I try to talk about this stuff. Uh, I think it's helpful, right? So thank you all for supporting. If you'd like to support the show and what I'm doing here on the Sunday shows, especially I'm trying to grow this aspect of the show because there's so many people that do uh, gear. And I love the gear part because I'm very much, I've, I've realized, finally, <laughs> I've been a gearhead all my life. I've always liked the nitty gritty of things, uh, the details. I've always been very detail oriented and I really enjoy the gear. So if you want to check out stuff about music gear next week i'm going to be talking about what i'm doing with this mess down here is i'm picking out from my collection of pedals what i want to build my pedal board with for my my little musical escape if you want to call it that or, or creation the floor uh, couldn't stay sister. clean could it no i i have everything out because i'm <laughs> i'm putting together a serious board for okay the um for the jams and i want to make sure i have all the power routed individually and prop so we'll get into the gear stuff if you're interested in gear join that um eddie Fay was in the is the u.s marine corps right on in the air force for 20 years dude yeah i they they refused to to bring me in because of my bad eye but i i wanted to be a, a pilot i wanted to fly jets and i wanted to be an astronaut <laughs> maybe through some other means, I might still get to go out into space. But, you know, if I could choose the way I would go when it came to, like, dying, that would be it. I'd, I'd want to be, like, out there. Floating in space forever. Forever. In the in the vacuum of space, as they call it, right? Anyway. <laughs> Torn apart by a black hole eventually. Anyway, do a video on it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So next week, you guys will will get further into deep down the rabbit hole. All right, there's a there's a little um, what do they call it? <laughs> Easter egg <laughs> for next week. Deep down in the rabbit hole of uh, our understanding of uh, our universe through our expanded minds in the use of psychedelics for medicinal with music, of course, medicinally and all that. Um, and thank you for your service. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for your service, you guys. That's what I'm trying to do with this stuff. I'm trying to be serviceable to the world in some way. And by the way, speaking of service, today, guess where I'm going? At 1.30. On my way there, I'm going to drop off some uh, musical gear to my sister's garage because we're trying to set her garage up as a little jam space where we can get loud. But we're going to be mostly getting really loud at our friend Joe's house. That's right next door to my brother John's. And that's where I'm going to probably wire up that 4x12 uh, with some speakers in there so I can be loud enough to compete with the uh, drums and all the live drums. It's so amazing to play just loud, loud live drums. It's great. Um, but um, yeah, we'll continue with this next week. I'll go into what exactly I'm putting on my pedal board, have it all put together and just, you know, show it to you guys. Cause I'm planning to take it with me Tuesday if I can get it together. Um, but so where I'm going today after I drop that stuff off to my sisters is to the red cross to donate platelets and plasma as I do monthly when I can, when I'm healthy. About a month or so ago, I had to cancel one because I caught this this head, chest cold kind of thing, but I'm pretty much over it. And I called him and I told him, hey, I'd have a little bit of, <clears throat> you know, waking up in the morning, this morning. I didn't even cough or nothing. I didn't have any phlegm. So I think I'm finally completely over it. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we can talk about gear, Hobo Rody, on next week's Wednesday night gear and demo show. Until then, you guys, thanks for coming. Thanks so much for joining. And don't forget, every every Wednesday night, I do do like a little giveaway of things. Like somebody won one of these recently. Three picks in one. The asteroid picked by Black Mountain Picks. That's the end of the show, you guys. Thanks for coming. Rock on. Be good to each other.